Joined now on the show by Windsor Spitfires forward Wyatt Johnston. Wyatt, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining me. It's uh, it's been an interesting year for you. You uh, typically would be playing hockey all year long. Obviously, with COVID and all that kind of stuff, that didn't that didn't happen, unfortunately, in Ontario. How did you kind of handle that situation of not being able to get on the ice with the Spitfires and play? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely pretty frustrating. I mean, especially being in my draft year this year. Um, but I mean, you know, I was able to to train uh, pretty pretty well, and you know, I was able to get on the ice. But yeah, it was it was definitely pretty frustrating, especially seeing the QMJHL play and the WHL just not being able to go back to uh, to Windsor this year and and play with the Spitfires. It was it was definitely pretty frustrating. Mm -hmm, for sure so obviously you had to play with team Canada a little bit later on and we'll talk about that later but I just want to talk about your first season in Windsor you were taking sixth overall in the draft how did you enjoy your first season with Windsor and what was I guess what was the experience like there uh yeah and I think it was a a really good experience for me uh you know I really liked my my first year in Windsor and I was I was really pumped and excited to get back to Windsor for my second year but sadly that didn't happen but you know I'm really excited for next year um, and yeah, I think I, ha- I had a really good experience. I mean, we had a pretty good team. I thought we would uh, we would have been able to to do well in playoffs. And yeah, it was overall it was, it was a great year. I, I love Windsor, and yeah, it's a great spot. So, how long did it take you to to say adjust to the OHL kind of game? Obviously, you had a pretty good season. You had thirty points and I believe fifty or so games. Do you think you kind of got it right away, or I know I've spoken to a few players. They said it took them about ten or fifteen games. Is that kind of similar to you too? Uh, yeah, it definitely took me, you know, a decent amount of time to to kind of adjust. Um, I think if we're looking at I think statistically wise, I think I only had a few points in my first like 20 games. So I think that was my adjustment period for me. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, it definitely took a while just playing against bigger, stronger, faster players. I mean, it was a big adjustment and, you know, everyone's super skilled. So that also just took some time. Yeah, so I guess in your first season, what was your favorite moment? Um, I think just my first game was pretty special. Um, I think we were down, I think, 4 nothing at that point. I, I was able to get my, my first goal, and we came back, and we, we won, uh, I think it was 9-6 or something. It was a pretty crazy game. Um, so, yeah, I think just experience the, o- the OHL in my first game was, was a pretty special game, and it was, it was a really fun game to play in. Um, so yeah, I think I think my first game was was pretty cool. That's a pretty wild game. I'm sure there's not been too yeah. many nine six games in the OHL before. So uh, no. obviously, like you said at the start, you got to play for Team Canada and go on to win gold. So congratulations on that. That must have just been Thank a you. Crazy feeling, hey. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I I loved it there. Mm-hmm. So I guess even with playing with Team Canada, it's always a special thing to do. But like, were you, I guess, even more grateful to do it this year? The fact you haven't been able to play at all? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was, I think I was pretty lucky, you know, having a chance to play for Canada because if I didn't have that opportunity, I wouldn't have been playing any, you know, real, real games uh, for, I don't think it would have been 18 months until I guess next year. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I was, I mean, it's obviously pretty, pretty cool. And it was a huge honor to, to wear the, the Maple Leaf on my chest. But I think there's just an extra amount of, uh, you know, I guess happiness and, you know, being able to play in, in this special year, I guess. Yeah. So when you did eventually get to play in that first game for Canada, how, how strange was it kind of stepping on the ice and being in a competitive game and a very meaningful game too, and just having fans as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, I think it was, I was pretty nervous. Um, it was kind of, it felt weird. I mean, I hadn't played a real game, so I wasn't really used to it. And I think it, it was also taken into a fact that it was against Finland and they're a really strong team. Um, I mean, that was exhibition. And also the, the, the stands were full with scouts just to add a little bit more of, of I don't know, pressure, I guess. So yeah, it was definitely, a, it was a pretty special game. Um, and, you know, it was, pretty cool for that to be to be the first one so this was your second time playing for team Canada you played at the U17s yeah. as well what was the biggest difference between the two tournaments and I guess just the whole experience uh yeah I mean I think for one thing the obvious difference is with with COVID and everything so just kind of the restrictions and all the all the limitations and stuff like that and protocols um you know but other than that I think 
uh, internationally, I think the, the, um, sorry, the competition was probably, I guess, pretty similar. Cause it's, I think for the most part, the teams were pretty similar, but I think, I guess Canada was maybe a little bit stronger cause we were able to combine all of the, the three teams. Um, so yeah, I think it, it was definitely, I mean, a much different situation this time around, but nonetheless, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. So who was someone on that team who I guess maybe you hadn't played with before? And this could even be when you're on the U17s too, who kind of stood out to you like, wow, this guy's a really good player. I'm sure most guys were, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, everyone on the team is pretty an unbelievable player. Um, This can is pretty deep with uh, talent. uh, But I think one guy, I think just Connor Bedard, um, being able to see him play and, I think a lot of us were kind of not too sure of what he'd be like, you know, being a 15 year old, but I think he's definitely a really special player. And, you know, he played a really big part in our team and being, I think, two years younger than most of the guys. Yeah, for sure. Like he's a, he's a big talent. And like you said, like you're not really sure what to expect from a guy who's 15 years Mm -hmm. old. Then you see him play and he kind of blows you away. Like, okay, there's a reason this kid's here for sure. So I wanted to talk to you about a different sport quickly. Cross country. I listened to another interview you were in. You big into cross country. I believe you won a title five years in a row or something like that. Correct? Yeah, it was the uh, the tri- tri- my school board's. Uh, I guess the TDSB, the Toronto District School Board, uh, the city finals. I won it from grade one to five. So how how important do you think it is as a hockey player to play two sports? And do you think that helps you a lot? in your hockey development too i'm like i'm sure if cross country like your endurance is a big thing and with hockey that's also very handy to have too uh yeah i think i think playing a another sport especially growing up is is pretty huge um i think it just develops so many different skills and kind of wh- whatever skill that is i think cross country for me was pretty big because uh you know being in the third period i think i was always fine i always found that you know i had a little bit of of extra energy compared to some of the other guys. But yeah, I think playing other sports, I mean, I played soccer and ball hockey right up as well. Um, so yeah, I think playing other sports is, is very important to just kind of developing um, as an athlete. And then that also translates to, to on the ice. Mm-hmm. So last couple for you, who's someone you've played with and it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you're a close friend with, but someone you've just had really good chemistry with. Who's that player you kind of think every time you play with, it just kind of clicks right away. Uh, I think one guy is uh, I played with him for I think four years in minor hockey is Jack Beck. Uh, he plays for the Ottawa 67s now, and I think we were line mates for four years. And I don't know how, but I think we always just kind of knew where we each other were on the ice and we were able to find each other. So I think I think he's one guy that when I think of chemistry, he's he's the guy I probably have the best chemistry with so far. Mm-hmm. And last one for you, just what are you most excited for for drafting? Um, I think just the opportunity to be selected by a a national hockey league team. I think that's just pretty special on itself. And, you know, that's the dream of mine to, to play in the NHL. And I think that's just one step closer. Um, you know, if I, if I have a chance to hear my name called that day, I mean, that'd be pretty special and a huge honor. So, um, you know, it's definitely a pretty special day, but yeah. Well, thanks a lot Wyatt for joining me today and best of luck with the draft coming up. Thank you. I appreciate it.